power bank. How do you choose the right one for you? You have big ones, you have small ones, you have ones that have AC, you have ones that have DC, you have ones that have solar, and the list goes on and on. What you need to know about them, you will find in this video, and if not, leave me a comment below. But I think I should be able to cover almost everything about power banks in this video. Obviously this is a long video, so I have chapters and you can jump very easily through the video in the section that you are interested. I base this video around three questions. What can it charge? What capacity it has? And how fast can you charge it or discharge it? Let's take it one by one. What can it charge? Yeah, this depends on the outputs you have on the power bank. So the normal power banks, the cheapest ones have USB-A and that's it, yeah? And with this one, of course, you can charge small devices like your smartphone and everything else that can be used with a USB-A. Now, if we jump to USB-C, for example, this power bank here has power delivery 45 watts. This means with this power bank, I can easily charge even my MacBook Pro or other laptops that use power delivery. Next, you can have a DC port on your power bank, and this is normally between 12 and 24 volts. Uh, sometimes it's adjustable, sometimes it's fixed. On this power bank here, I have a DC port that supports only 12 volts. So I would use this DC, for example, to power this external hard disk drive. Yeah, this one needs exactly 12 volts. And there are also other devices that use exactly 12 volts, like Wi-Fi routers, and other things like that that use a small charger with a barrel plug. Here I have another power bank that actually lets me choose the voltage I want, yeah, between 12 and 20 volts. So this may come in handy for different devices, as some of the devices are actually using, for example, 20 volts, like a laptop, for example, yeah, those are normally using 20. And then you would be surprised, but there are actually power banks that have an AC plug. Yeah, exactly as you have in your house. This, for example, is an AC and you see here AC out. Double click this and I will activate this normal wall outlet. This has a special shape because you can use an American style plug or an UK or even an European one. So this is uh, very nice because you can charge everything with AC. But be careful if you live in Europe, you would have 220 volts. And if you live in America or USA, yeah, you would normally have 110. A lot of modern chargers are able to switch between 110 and 220 to be compatible in both regions. For example, if we look here, we can see at AC input, it's between 100 volts and 240 volts should work no problem. 60 and 50 hertz. If you're really not familiar with these ports that I discussed about, here is uh, how they should look like. But I think everybody knows this, right? The next point I want to discuss, and this can be a bit tricky, is the capacity. Manufacturers normally advertise their batteries with the milliampere hour. Yeah? because this allows them to trick a bit the system because they don't tell you for example what is the voltage and then they can use a smaller voltage giving you a bigger milliamp hour value so if you actually want to compare two batteries in terms of capacity you would have to first find out the capacity in what hour yeah this is the true capacity let's say uh, which is comparable from one battery with another battery, even if the voltage is different. Normally the voltage is given between 3.6 volts up to 10 volts, yeah? So be careful about this. This one, for example, has 3.8 volts and 10 amp hours. This means actually 10,000 milliampere hours, yeah? And you see, they also did the math and this is a total of 38 watt hours. This is very useful because you already see the capacity in watt hour. On this big power bank that I have here, I actually have the capacity rated directly in watt hours because this is what is important in the end. 
And I give you another example. Here we have this power bank that uses 3.6 volts, yeah, not 3.8. I have here also a nice formula that helps you find out the watt hour, the true capacity of the battery in case the manufacturer doesn't provide this. But normally they should provide this. But again, if it's not there, you would have X amount of milliamp hours per 1000 to give you the uh, amps and then you multiply this by the voltage and you get the watt hours yeah so for example if you have a 50,000 milliamp hour battery at 3.7 volts this will result in 185 watt hour and this is exactly the capacity i have on this power bank you see so if you understood this, let me give you more details. When you actually want to start using this battery, you can expect 80% of this total capacity to be usable. This is because we have a loss, let's say it like this. This can be because uh, the battery needs, for example, to raise the voltage to 5 volts, to charge your smartphone, for example, or to 12 volts, if it has quick charge. Yeah, so raising this voltage means a loss and also most of the times you cannot actually deplete the battery because this is not good for the battery life and a lot of manufacturers for that reason will block 10% of your battery just to make sure that they can keep up with the warranty because otherwise if you would always drain the battery this would damage it so if we take this power bank as an example that is rated 185 watt hour we would have 148 watt hour usable and let's calculate how many times we could charge for example a smartphone iPhone SE this is an average smartphone in uh, 2020 and this one has 6.96 watt hour battery this means with this big power bank I could charge it 21 times of course this depends on if you're using or not your smartphone and so on so in reality it might be less but this is normally how you can calculate how much you can get out of a power bank next example is a macbook pro which has 58.2 watt hour battery and now if we want to use the same power bank we can actually go and get 2.5 charges out of this big power bank Next, if I would have an AC output, for example, I could run the Xbox Series S, which consumes 60 to 80 watts per hour. I could use it, of course, between 1.8 hours and 2.4 hours. Yeah, depending on what game you play, it can consume less or more. If you want to power, for example, a 3.5 inch hard disk drive, I have measured that this can consume from 8 to 12 watts per hour. Yeah. So this means I can run this from this power bank around 18 hours. Yeah, if it doesn't consume the maximum. If it would consume the maximum, I can get 12 hours out of this. So a hard drive actually consumes more than you think. And just for reference, because most people have hard disk drive in their laptops, uh, a 2.5 inch hard disk drive consumes normally between 4 and 5 watts. This is actually a lot. Uh, I would say this is normally what you use to charge the older smartphones with. And because of this, actually, I would gladly recommend switching to an SSD. Yeah, I think this is one of the reasons why we see better battery life on the new laptops, which are using an SSD. The third point that is important to me, how fast can you charge or discharge a power bank? Because there are a lot of cheap power banks with high capacity that it would take you forever to charge it yeah so as an example i took this average power bank which is 24000 milliamp hours at 3.6 volts yeah this is a total of 86.4 watt hours now if you use a power bank like this which has an input with micro usb you can be sure that this will not charge fast at all because the micro usb connection normally supports from 10 to 18 watts yeah and normally it's on the lower value uh, i haven't seen a power bank that can charge with quick charge with micro usb yeah so i would rather bet for the lower value 
So to charge this power bank with micro USB, this would take around 8.64 hours. And this is not even considering that at 80%, normally most of the devices are trying to slow down the charging to preserve the battery life. So probably a real world scenario here, it would be 10 hours. Next, the port that I recommend is a must have on a power bank is the USB type C and this can charge from 10 to 100 watts. So the simple fact that you have uh, an USB type C, it doesn't automatically give you a faster charging. Yeah, because you can have a USB type C that is also letting you charge it with 10 watts, for example. So pay attention to the input on the specifications of the power bank. Yeah, because I usually like to buy power banks that have at least at least 30 watts input, let's say. To show you an example, I have here a nice power bank that has power delivery input and output with 100 watts. This means I can charge it with 100 watts and I can also power a laptop with up to 100 watts. 100 watts, for example, is a gaming laptop or uh, the 16 inch MacBook Pro. This is how the chargers are. Yeah, I have here a charger of my Razer Blade Stealth 2020 with a uh, NVIDIA dedicated graphic card. This is also a 100 watt charger. So a battery this size, theoretically we could charge in under one hour. In the real world, I would still expect a bit over one hour because as I said previously, starting 80%, the charging gets a bit slower. And it really depends from a device to another how it's programmed, so I cannot really estimate. But I would say in this time you can get up to 80%. Yeah, depends on the power bank. For example, if you check my last video, I was able to charge this lithionite tanker with 105 watts through USB Type-C and it took me around 2 hours, let's say. Yeah, with this formula probably I would have uh, got one and a half hours, but uh, because of the slower charging at the end, probably it took me around two hours to charge this. So you can see the difference. This big boy, I can charge it in around two hours and this small one, it can take me, for example, four hours to charge. Yeah. The next way you can charge or discharge a battery is of course through a DC connection. And I really like this one because normally if you have a DC connection on a power bank, this means it's compatible with solar panels. Yeah, this is quite nice. And that's why I bought batteries that have a DC connection on them. Now, charging with DC for regular power banks, you can charge up to 120 watts. For example, I have this lithionite tanker, which can charge with DC and DC only. And this can charge with 38 watts of DC. Yeah, we multiply 19 with two. If we take a look at another power bank that has this DC input, this one can charge at 60 watts with DC. Yeah, this is interesting because at USB-C you can charge it with 100 watts. And this one even claims to have an MPPT controller. MPPT controller is the best solar controller you can have in a power bank. On the market you can find also special power stations like this one here. And there are actually some of them that can jump over 1000 watts. This means very, very fast charging. But normally this is also for a very big capacity. So what I want to highlight here, if you're charging at home with a charger, you actually convert the AC to DC. Because batteries cannot store AC power, yeah? Batteries can store only DC. Next point is how fast you can discharge these batteries because some of them have big capacity but if you want to charge for example a MacBook Pro it can take you I don't know 5 hours to charge your MacBook Pro. So this is what you should be more interested in USB-A regular it's 10 watts uh, this is the slowest charge you can get and you have a quick charge 18 watts this is normally marked with a different color for example, uh, you have orange or you have blue. These ports normally are supporting 18 watts. For example, you see here I have a regular port, which probably is around 12 watts. 
and this is a quick charge port it has also a thunder sign and it's also orange so this one will probably have 18 watts if you want to charge faster if you have a device that is capable to charge faster you may want to use the orange one the next port that i actually recommend always to have on the power bank is the usb type c and this can start with 10 watts so if you have a usb type c on your power bank this doesn't automatically make it faster yeah to make it faster it needs to have quick charge or power delivery power delivery can go up to 100 watts and for example i have here this big power bank yeah very big you would think that this has a fast usb type c and actually it doesn't this one has 15 watts usb type c yeah i was not able to get more out of this usb type c but on the other hand on this power bank i have exactly 100 watt uh, power delivery and i tested this in my last clip and actually it exceeded my expectations so yeah this means with this power bank i can even power directly with usb type c my gaming laptop yeah or i can power directly a macbook pro with the maximum power that the laptop can support with this one even if it's a bit bigger capacity 180 watt hour compared to 150 watt hour this is actually going to charge much slower my macbook pro for my macbook pro i would need around five hours to charge it with this power bank probably my general recommendation buy a power bank with at least 45 watts power delivery this will be future proof and you can charge also for example gaming consoles and other devices and i've seen that a lot of phones start to support faster and faster charging speed yeah i think there are phones out there that can charge with 90 watts yeah 90 watts a phone with two batteries separated inside for example and a little extra at the end of the video a lot of batteries are using this technology called lithium ion so this normally promises you 500 cycles to 80 percent i don't think you should worry about this this will easily last you a few years i'm not a chemist but i think this is lithium phosphate or something similar you can correct me in the description this is automotive grade cells and this will last much longer five times as much and uh, even more yeah this is the average rating around 2500 cycles to 80 percent these ones normally they are telling you it will last you 10 years the only problem that we have here the last ones are much heavier than the uh, lithium ion type for example my power stations are both using this kind of uh, cell type and uh, this will provide much longer lifespan for them now i hope you learn much more than you expected and if you have any question leave it in the comment section below i will try to reply to everybody so thank you very much for watching and have a good one